Yo, yo, yo. Is this thing on? Oh, sweet. What up? Welcome, everybody. Welcome. We are back to, to Ghetto Streams. We're back to Ghetto Streams. We got a, we got a barky puppy outside, too. We got a barky puppy out there as well. Maybe we'll go venture out to see the dog at some point. Heisting. Mwah. A kiss for you. Thank you so much for the uh, for the sub. Maybe you subbed and then didn't follow, or something like that, for a little bit. I don't know. If you ever unfollowed and then refollowed me, it'll revert to whatever this new one is. Doctor Dibbles here to drop his SoundCloud album Two Shrines. That's right. That's right, Two Shrines is coming at ya. It's coming at ya, boys. You don't understand why I wear a shirt on Newbie Tuesday? Because it's Newbie, not Nudie. It's Newbie Tuesday. I don't know how many times we must have this conversation. Alright, so while we get prepped, I guess let's do our quick intro. This is Newbie Tuesday, episode number nine. I'm not at home. I am, uh, I had a work trip come up, so I had to go away for work. So we are, um, back at, uh, my friend's place working on Wi-Fi and, uh, on my laptop and whatever. So that's why we didn't have Monday's stream. Um, cause I don't have my Holy Grail source on this character and I did, uh, that'd be a whole, whole thing. So the first thing to note is the, uh, MF challenge. I'm just going to extend that one, right? The, the find all the poison facets. I'm going to extend that one. Okay. Um, upcoming things to note, Manverse stream is going to be this Saturday. Manverse stream is going to be this Saturday. You didn't miss the Monday stream. It just didn't happen. So we're going to postpone it. Just give it another week. Skipping Mo Magic Find Monday this week. That's just how we're going to have to do it. You know, sometimes life gets in the way. Um, I also want to chat just about, like, life. Um, ah. Huh. I think I chipped my tooth. I don't know how. I didn't need anything hard. Hmm. Oh well. We'll deal with that another time. That's weird. That's not something I was expecting. You're a dentist if I need? I think I need a dentist. That is definitely broken. Um, anyways, anyways, no, it's just been very, very busy, very hectic. Um, I didn't get enough for a poison of a necro. I need more for the poison of a necro. Yeah, no, it's just been hectic. I mean, I was looking for an apartment and doing all this, uh, all this stuff. And, and so I want to really Fresh get a good, meat. like, settle down state. Thank you so much, mind blank. For the 27 months. Wow. Wow, thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Put that there. Um, yeah, so it's just been it's just been a little crazy. I'm going to settle into a schedule. And it's going to be good. We're going to get into a nice groove. And uh, we're just going to roll with it, you know. We're just going to roll with it. It's, it's all going to work out. It's all going to be good. Man. Sorry, that's weird. Just weird feeling. Subbidge. Yeah, I don't think that's a command. Um, anyways. So, now that we're beyond that note, let's get into some of Newbie Tuesday today. So, there's two things I'm going to cover today. The first one I'm going to cover is route guides. 
And then the second thing is going to be the two more characters um, that we have to deal with, right, that we've encountered along the way. Uh, because last time we did five characters. We did five whole characters. I'm getting a little help right now getting the other characters set up. Um, but then we're just going to go through, talk about the sorceress and the paladin. Uh, but until then, need more skill points and teeth. I do. I need one more tooth, I guess. Um, until then, I want to discuss the routes. So, with that being said, let me add image three. Yeah. Make this bigger. Perfect. Beautiful. Doing a series on YouTube for Speedrun D2? I have a series on YouTube for Speedrun D2. This is in general routing. Yes, we have just started. This is going to be in general routing. So this is something that I personally um, have always kind of wanted whenever I play a game. This is something that I've sort of always been like, man, I wish I knew what the heck to do. Like when I'm playing Path of Exile or I'm playing even Diablo 3 or whatever it is, I get into a game and I go, where do I go? And then I get lost and then I think that the hole is really important and then I'm going in there. Do I even have the hole listed? I do, you know? Um, and so it's like, there's all these locations in the game. Some of them are important. Some of them are not important. What exactly do I do, right? Uh, so I want to give a run through of every single act and why areas are important and kind of talk about each location, okay? Uh, so the first one, we start in act one at the rogue encampment, right? And you'll note the arrows. The arrows are going to be green is your main path. Green is where you must go to get to the end of the game. Red is going to be taking you to quest. Not all of them are required. In fact, I think none of the red are going to be required quests. And then yellow is taking you to optional areas. Is an underground passage in the wrong spot? It is. See, this is the thing. This is what happens. Um, gosh dang it. All right, hold on. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna fix this. Mm, text. This is what happens. There's so many areas. There's so many areas. Uh, wow, this is annoying. Dark wood. No, I just need a. Oh my god. I don't have the the image. So I don't have the software to change this image. I can open it and paint. I can open it and paint. Yeah, there might be a couple areas missing and there might be a couple things that happened like this. Um, I apologize. This stuff just happens sometimes. Underground passage. Control X, Control V. There. And then, nope, where's my color dropper? Dink. Okay, and now let's get some text going here. Dark wood. Yeah, this, this is uh, something that we should probably have. All right, it's gonna be a different font. I don't care, save. Done. Perfect. It happens. I'm stuck. I figure that's whatever thing. Hopefully he edits these moments out for YouTube. Mm, probably not. They're probably going to happen. Um, okay, so let's get into it, right? So we're starting in the Rogue Encampment. Okay, this is going to be your hometown. This is where you're going to have all of your base stuff, um, right? And if we pop off that real quick, we can see our Rogue Encampment right here. Right, you have four different layouts, that's not really important, but you can exit one of the four directions. Based on which layout you get, 
You have your Akara over here, who's going to give you like potions and stuff. Kosh is going to give you your mercenary to hire. Um, Charcy will repair your items and sell you like armors and things like that. And Jeed will also sell you some armors and boots and stuff. Um, and it will also have gambling. And then Wariv will take you to the next act when you have finished this act. So that's just kind of your basic look at your rogue encampment right there. And I actually um, want to go here and download this. This will be very easy. Um, quit it. Just give me these files. Download. Direct download. Cool. Okay. Uh, from there, you'll move into the Blood Moor. Okay. You'll also note that off the rogue encampment is the secret cow level. Um, this only exists after you have completed the entire game through an act. So act one, two, three, four, and or through in, uh, a difficulty. Act one, two, three, four, and five. Once you beat Bale, um, underground passage two, level two. Just pretend like that arrow runs a long way. Uh, so the, the secret cow level will be off of there. You'll go in and you can create what's called the secret cow level. It opens a red portal. You go in, there's cows and things like that to kill. Okay? Simple enough. Not required, um, but just a fun thing that you can do. Kind of a silly whatever thing. The next thing is going to be the blood moor, right? So you walk out and you, you're in the blood moor. Here you have no boss groups, in normal at least. Um... And just really a couple monsters. You have, you have zombies, devilkins, and quill rats. And uh, it's a very easy area. There's not a lot here. But there is the Den of Evil. So it's a little hole in the ground. If you find it, it's not a required quest. But you can see it's red. It is one of the quests. It's the first quest, actually. Um, and you can go in there. You can kill all the monsters. And then it gives you plus a skill. And it also gives you a respec. Which means later on in the game, at whatever point, you can go talk to Akara again and you can say reset everything. And it will reset all your stats and all your skills. And you can do that once in every difficulty. So that's a great way to, if you mess up your character along the way, if you just want to have a different build halfway through, right? A lot of speedrunning is where you go and you start out with a crappy or a like light build and then you switch into a cold build or you start out whatever it is, right? So you're going to do that stuff. After that, that's the only thing in the Blood Moor. After that is the Cold Plains. The Cold Plains has a lot of things coming off of it. Here you can see you have the cave, which is a little hole. It's pointless. You can go in the cave and kill some stuff if you want. You don't. There's nothing in there that you need to kill. You also have the Burial Grounds, which is another quest. This is a pretty meh quest. Um, you just go over there and, uh, you know, you, you kill her and you kill whatever, um, and you get a mercenary with you. But you don't have to actually uh, even go there and do that quest to get a mercenary. I think once you're level 8, you can hire a mercenary anyways. So it's one of those like optional things. A lot of people, I would say, don't go to the burial grounds, but you can do it if you would like. Um, that one's kind of up to you. Uh... And let me go here. Okay. You also have within there, yeah, Blood Raven. Thank you. I couldn't remember her name. I was like, the girl. I was kept trying to say the Countess, but that's not right. Blood Raven is her name. Over there as well, you have the Crypt and the Mausoleum. Um, both of these areas are just, just areas with monsters. But something that's good to note is the Mausoleum is a... Um, Area level 85. Okay. So, mausoleum. So, uh, but the crypt is area level 83. For those of you who are, like, extremely new to this, you're probably like, uh, okay, what does this mean to me? Area level 85, and this is in hell, is the highest level area um, in the game. Which means you can find any item within this area from a boss group at least, a unique group down here. So the mausoleum's a little spread out, not my favorite one, but it's still good to note, it is the first level 85 area in the game. 
um, when you're in hell. So it's a great place to farm if you'd like to do that. Okay. Um, next up, you also have, yeah, then the crypt is 83. So not as great. A lot of times if you want to go farm there, you just rush over to the muslim. So anyway, it's cold plains. I like to just personally go right through to the stony field. And that's the next place that we need to go. Okay. So we're going to the stony field. Here you have Tristram, which is a quest, but this is the whole stones thing, right? So you have to go actually all the way through the dark wood and then come back to the stony field. But in the stony field, there's some stones that are next to the path. You have to kill the monsters there. You don't have to, I guess. But you, you generally kill Rakanishu and his monsters there. Um, you go forward all the way through to the dark wood, which you can see is through the underground passage. Um, you don't have to go to underground passage level two. You can see that UP level two arrow. It's a little bit off, but just know it comes from underground passage. Um, you just go straight through there. That's just a place to kill monsters if you want more monster kills. You go straight to dark wood. You find tree Ed wood fist. You click the tree, get the scroll, then go back to the stony field. Uh, after talking to Akara, click on all the stones in the correct order, and it'll open up a portal to Tristram where you can go save Kane. Additionally, this is where you can get Wurt's leg, which is used for the secret cow level. So once again, not a necessary area. A lot of people, I would say, generally do this quest, though, right? If they're going to skip maybe Blood Raven or something like that, they, they still might do this one. Not used in speedrunning, but whatever. Okay. So then you go back, whatever you've gone through the Ingrub Passage or in the Dark Woods. I want to move forward. Great. Now you're going to go to the Black Marsh. This is another area that has a few places that you can go from it, right? The first one is the Hole. Nobody really goes in the Hole. Uh, it's just another one that it looks exactly like the Den of Evil or the Cave, right? It's the same sort of idea. Um, it's just a hole in the ground. And it doesn't, it doesn't have any crazy like level either uh, in hell. So if you want to do cartographer percent, sure, go in the hole, but most people avoid that. Um, it also has the, the tower cellar, which tower cellar level one, two, three, four, and five. You'll see the tower. You'll know what it is when you see it. Um, this is another quest. This is one that I might recommend. Lots of good experience there. Lots of good runes there. A lot of people farm the countess who's at the bottom of the tower um, to get runes from her. So you'll, you'll just go in and run through those levels over and over if you'd like or as many times. We do it in speedrunning quite often. But you don't have to go down there if you don't want to. Once again, that is a quest, but it's still an optional quest. Only the green arrows are required in this game. So if I don't want to do that, I can totally skip it. I can just go right through to the Timo Highland. The Tamo Highland is going to be a very quick, you're always going to run to the top right of the map um, to go towards the Monastery Gate. However, it does have the pit, and the pit, once again, is one of those area level 85 places in this game. So this is the second area level 85. A lot of people like to come and farm the pit. It's a very good farming area when you're in hell. So it's not optional by any means, but it is a good farming spot. So you go to Mo Highland, you go to the Monastery Gate, it's very short, and then you get to the Outer Cloister, which is also very small. There's only three layouts for the Outer Cloister. You're either going to run to the left, to the top right, or to the bottom right. Or like, like, you know, basically you get a fork and you just go one of the directions. You can tell which direction you need to go in based on which layout you get. Um, you can look that stuff up. It's very easy, uh, but yeah. Uh, so you'll go, you'll go through there and you'll go to the Barracks. And from this point on, and this right here um, is why I really like Act 1, especially kind of in a, from a speedrunning perspective, or why people might say, why do you prefer Act 1 over Act 3 or Act 2, whatever it is, right? It's because it's very linear, okay? So I'm in the Outer Cloister. From there, I go to the Barracks. There is an optional quest, but it's in the Barracks, um, and that is to just get the hammer from the smith. Um, and then you go to jail level 1, jail level 2, jail level 3. From there you get to the inner cloister. Then you go to the cathedral. And then you go to the catacombs level 1, 2, 3, and 4 where, you'll, where you will kill Indariel. So this is um, the progression right through Act 1. It's very simple. It's very linear. Uh, you're never really going to run that 
far de you're not going to deviate that far away from the path. The only thing is if you get caught going into like underground passage level two, thinking that the exit needs to be there, or if you get caught running around in, you know, because you went through the underground passage, now you think the hole is required, the pit is required, all those things. But generally, you're always going to kind of back out and keep moving. And everything's pretty, pretty easy. They did a good job setting up Act 1, in my opinion, um, to be decently easy for uh, whatever, right? For just Act 1, get used to the game. Maps are very simple and set up. So, if we come over here and move to Act 2, whee! So Act 2 is a little different. Act 2 starts to get a little bit, little bit spicier, right? A little bit spicier. You'll notice the green arrows don't just go, right? It's not just A, B, C, D, E. You're done. Um, instead, you have to go a little bit uh, differently. Magic Fun Monday is just pushed to next Monday because I've, I have a work trip. I just couldn't stream yesterday at all. Um, so the first thing you'll need to know, you're in the loot galane, okay? You have a couple things you can do. The first one is you can go in the sewers. And uh, the sewers, that should actually have a red arrow because that's a quest. Um, if you go in the sewers, you go down to the bottom of the sewers and you can kill a guy and that is a quest for you. So that's the first thing you need to note. Uh, there's actually two entrances to the sewers as well. They're the same sewers, it's just two different entrances. That's it. You're just looking for stairs, stairs, and then the guy. After that, um, you'll notice that red line, that's a blocking line. So I can't go to the harem to start. Okay, so after that I have to exit uh, the loot glane and head out to the rocky waste. Okay, in the rocky waste, there's going to be a tomb-looking thing. You don't have to go in there. It has beetles in it. It has some monster groups in it. It's not a terrible, terrible area, um, but you don't need to go in there. Okay. Nothing crazy about it. And it's got a level 1 and 2, I think. I, don't, I didn't put 1, 2 on it, but it has a couple levels in it. That's all irrelevant. Out here... Um, some of the areas you have to go right. We just you want to stay on the high ground for a lot of stuff, but there are different areas you have to go in. So you ignore that. You just go straight to the dry hills. Okay. Uh, when you're in the dry hills, there's going to be another tomb-looking thing that looks identical to the stony tomb. This one you have to go in. This one is the halls of the dead. There's level one, two, and three. And at the bottom of level three is a quest that gets you a cube. You need this cube for morphing the staff. Okay. So um, you'll go in there, you'll go back to the dry hills, and you'll continue on. Now in the far oasis, you're running around the far oasis, congratulations. And this is one of those places I would also recommend getting waypoints, because whenever you go all the way into these areas, like the maggot lair, if you get down to the bottom of maggot lair and you're like, great, I did it, or the bottom of the halls of the dead, then you go, oh crap, now I have to like run all the way back and backtrack the whole thing. That's annoying. It's a lot easier if you can just take a TP and then go to your waypoint. So I'd recommend getting the waypoints in these areas. Um, so yeah, so then you go to the far oasis and you'll find a little hole in the ground. This is similar to the cave or whatever it is. Um, and within that, you're going to find the maggot lair, level one, two, and three. This is probably one of the people's least favorite maps in the game. If you are a hammered in, if you are a summon necro, if you are a, I mean, there's so many characters I can name that hate this, absolutely hate this uh, area because it's just, it's just garbage, right? It's just like narrow halls all the way around. You're not going to have a lot of fun here, but you have to do it. And so you get to the bottom of it and you'll get the staff, hooray! And then you can put the staff in your cube and that's half of what you need. Then you'll go back out and you'll go to the Lost City. This is just another exit. Then in the Lost City, there will be an exit that takes you to the Valley of the Snakes. You need to go here. And then there's the Snakes Tombs, I guess, whatever it's called, Claw Viper Temple. I guess that should be one of the names after. Within the Valley of the Snakes, there's a Claw Viper Temple. Just another tomb looking thing. You go in it, level one, two, um, and you will clear that area out, get an amulet, and you can morph those together in your cube. Good. Now you're good to continue. 
There's also the ancient tunnels. This is just a little trap door in the ground within the Lost City. Not required, but this is another one of those A-level 85 areas, or area level 85, which once again means it's got very good stuff for killing. Additionally, this is probably my favorite place to farm as a cold sorceress um, because, it, because it just doesn't have cold immunes in it really at all, unless it's like spawned on a unique champ or monster. Uh, but very, very good area, so that's an area level 85. Now, once we've do got done with the Valley of Snakes, boom, we have our amulet, we can go back to the Loot Galane, and now we go in the harem. So in the bottom left, there's like a palace temple looking area. You want to go towards that, the guards will move out of the way, and you can now go down. So you're going to go down into the harem, you're going to go down into the palace cellar, level 1, level 2, level 3, and then in the middle of level 3, there's going to be a little, like, stand. I don't know how to put it otherwise, other than this. Portal. It's not on, though. You have to click it and basically turn it, the portal on. And then you can take that through to the Arcane Sanctuary, which is one of the most annoying places in the game, um, but a place that people like to farm keys. And also, I guess I should note that in Act 1, you could farm the Countess for keys, right? So she also would drop a key, which is used for Ubers later on. Um, so the summoner will be at the end of one of four directions in the Arcane Sanctuary. It's just a giant map, and it starts and goes out four paths, and it randomly at one of the ends will be the summoner. Good luck finding him. That's it. So a lot of times, once again, you want to get the waypoint at the, at the center there, because you're going to have to come back to it, right? It's going to be annoying. You're going you're gonna to often run multiple ways before you find the exit to it. So you'll get to the end. You'll kill the summoner. You don't have to. Um, I guess online you do, so if you're like, have a party. So just kill him anyways. And you'll click on this little book and open the portal, and this will take you to the Canyon of the Magi. Now, at the Canyon of the Magi, you're going to see seven tombs. You only have to go on one of them. You can go on all of them. They're really good experience in normal. Uh, so a lot of people like to farm Tower Ash's tomb in normal to get to like or when they're level 18 to like 21, 25, whatever it is. Um, it's a decent place. So I would recommend it for farming purposes. But other than that, if you go to your quest log, it'll tell you which symbol it is. And then you can just run and look and see the symbols on the outsides of the tombs to know which one it is that you need to go in. You go in there, you'll go around until you find the orifice, and you'll shove your staff into it, okay, um, that you've morphed in your cube. Uh, and that opens up Tarash's chamber, where you will find Bale. Just kidding, you're looking for Bale, but you'll find Duriel. Um... And so then you find Duriel, and you'll go back to town, and then this will let you leave, right? You'll talk to Jurhan, and you'll be able to head over to Act 3. So, a little bit more mixed up, um, right? A little bit different from, uh, from Act 1. Act 1 is very linear. Act 2 still has some linear pieces to it, but there is more of the, a little bit of darting off, right? Um, not a lot of distractions, though. Really not a lot of distractions. I mean, look right there. I want you to really look at this map and see how much is green versus, like, yellow uh, or reds, whatever, right? A lot of green here. So a lot of the stuff that you're doing, besides ancient tunnels, stony tombs, sewers, um, is actually stuff that needs to be done. Now, this is where the game sometimes can get really stupid, because we are going to move into act number three. And now you can see we've added on a lot of yellows uh, and we've got some blues in here and it's a little bit more, a eh, little bit more annoying, right? So now we are getting into um, act number three. Okay, <laughs> now we're getting into act number three. Uh, so there's some good things about Act 3 and a lot of terrible things about Act 3. The first thing that you'll note is you go in the Curse Docks. The, the, the town is probably the worst town layout. A lot of things are spread out and just in weird areas, and it's very, like, 
you know, you're running on like docks and stuff, so it's not very like open to just run around in a straight path to things. You have to go on little dock square patterns uh, or 90 degree angles and stuff. Kind of an annoying town. Probably my least favorite town in the game. Um, beyond that, is Flare Dungeon not green? Where is it? Oh, yeah. Sorry, that should be green. Uh, beyond that, and I'll discuss, discuss that. Best town layout, sorry. So beyond that, we'll, we'll just get going. So you start off, you go out there in the cursed docks, you head to the spider forest. Now, a few things. The first one is there are two holes in the spider forest. One is next to a waypoint, one is not. The one that's next to the waypoint is called the arachnid lair. You don't have to go in there. You can if you would like. You do not have to go in there at all. The one called the spider cavern, you have to go in because you have to go and click the chest at within there is like a sparkly chest you click that it'll drop um one of the pieces it'll drop the eye for you okay so hooray yay you get the eye great come back out of the spider forest now a few things to note about the spider forest and the flare jungle and great marsh whatever it's very trolly sometimes and how the pathing can be so it's not always just going to be like a square, right? Like in Act 1 and Act 2, a lot of things are squares. My exits are corners, whatever, we're good. It's pretty easy. There's even a path to follow in Act 1, right? You literally hop on the path and follow the path to the exit. Act 2 doesn't get rid of the path, but still has kind of the, that nice layout. Act 3 gets rid of all of that, and now it starts putting tile pieces together in weird ways. It'll lead you to dead ends. Um, the only thing you really need to look for is the openings, right, to uh, take you to, like, the spider cavern or the erected lair, whatever areas that it is. Um, just look for the openings in each of these areas. So spider cavern is going to be through one of those openings. So whenever you see the two little, like, pillars and a little uh, group of flares right around there and stuff, you want to go all the way in there to see what is in there. Yo, what up? <laughs> How do I have Kylie's... <laughs> what? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> what the... What? <laughs> I think that was on her stream, though. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> what? <laughs> Have I been hacked? I I mean my my alerts were working though, right? My alerts were working though. Um, and she's streaming. Okay, so we haven't kicked her off. I think somebody just subbed on her stream. Unless Tiz is here. Tiz, are you here? I don't, I don't believe so. Uh, okay. Alert box. Copy the widget. I mean, mine's been working, though. That's the crazy thing. I'm pretty sure we've seen all of my alerts. Okay, maybe that did it. Dear YouTube, please hold. Okay, coming back to it. That was weird. Well, yay for subbing to Kylie, I guess. Um, all right. So, anyways, we are back in the spider forest. And now this is um, where it gets a little bit strange. Okay. 
because of the way that they've built out these trolley maps, okay, because of the way that they've built this, you will either have a direct path to the Flare Jungle and the Great Marsh off of your Spider Forest, or just the Great Marsh. If it is just the Great Marsh, then the Great Marsh will also lead to the Flare Jungle. If it is both, then the Great Marsh will not lead to the Flare Jungle, and the Spider Forest will just lead to the Flare Jungle. But sometimes they can have weird connectors between them still. So you could have no connection from Spider Forest to uh, Flare Jungle, but then if you go through one of the weird paths, like the, the, the pillars, and you go to one of those areas, it might connect off into it. Or that might connect into Great Marsh as well. Or the Flare Jungle could connect to the Great Marsh from there, but also have that path through the Spider Forest. It's very... Um, It, it, it's it's very much a weird love triangle that can break in different ways. So Spider Forest is uh, guaranteed to connect to at least the Great Marsh. Flare Jungle uh, optional. Fresh meat, fresh oh, meat. Two God. month baby Two bump. Month baby bump. What is? I don't know what's going on anymore. What? Thank you so much, Omega. Now it's decided to double down on everything. I just can't even... Okay. Who knows? Who knows what's going on? What? Yeah. So those things can happen. Those things can happen. At least it's not Kylie's showing up, I guess. Uh, my alerts are in the love triangle, too. I think that's true. Two months, two alerts. I wonder what 30 months looks like. Ah, 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 fresh, 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 me, me, me. Um, yes, so back back to where we go. So we don't care about the Great Marsh. The Great Marsh has those pillars and all. We ignore those if we're in the Great Marsh. All you need to know is you want to go from Spider Forest to Flare Jungle. Sometimes you can go directly from the Spider Forest to the Flare Jungle. Sometimes you have to go through the Great Marsh to get to the Flare Jungle. You're going to have to test it out. There are ways to kind of start to understand if you might have a Great Marsh skip, we like to call it, and have that direct to the Flare Jungle. Um, that's way too advanced for this video. And honestly, I'm only right maybe 80% of the time. So... You like oh, Guiley's Lotus better. Yeah. So, now we've gotten to the Flare Jungle. Okay? Cool, we did it. Once again, it's going to be the same idea as the spider forest. I'm looking for those two pillars with the little groups, and I want to go into the swampy pit. No, I don't want to go there. I want to go to the flare dungeon. And I know that the flare dungeon, the arrow is yellow there. Pretend it's green, okay? Flare dungeon is required. So you're one, going to want to go down flare dungeon one, two, and three. And once again, I would recommend getting the waypoint in the flare jungle to make it so that you can get to the bottom of the flare dungeon, and then just come back to your waypoint and continue on. Right. So Flare Dungeon is required. You'll get out of there. And now you're finally going to get out of the terrible part of Act 3. That is the horrible part. Um, so you'll move forward into what's called the Lower Crust. From there, there is the Ruined Temple. Uh, if you would like to do that, which is going to get you... Um, is that in the Lower? Am I missing the area? Because you have the lower cross, the cross bazaar. Is that in the bazaar? Ruined is in the bazaar. Yeah, it is. All right. Let's let's open up the paint. Let's open up the paint. Like I said, this is. It's there's so many locations. When I was piecing all this together, that we accidentally. Um, is there a lasso select? Let me just uh, make a, a line again here. Okay, we'll do a racing. Whee! We'll do filling in. Oops. 
and then we'll do an arrow in red. Uh, it's not the arrow that I want. This one. A little bold. That's okay. And then we'll do a green arrow here. On the fly changes with a new program. Huzzah. Okay, and save. Wow, look at that. Amazing updates. So, Lower Karas does not take you to the Ruined Temple. Um, Lower Karas will take you forward to the Karas Bazaar. Okay. Now, and yes, you can you can say that is also true if you would like. You're going to have this as well. Beautiful. Look at all. There's so many arrows in Act 3. Okay, so many arrows in Act 3. So you're in the Cursed Bazaar. There are a lot of places to go. The first one, like I say, is the Ruined Temple. Um, this is a great place to go because you're going to get the Tome. Uh, additionally, you're going to get... Uh, this is Lamb Essence Tome, so you can get some additional stat points. So it's a good quest to do. Very short, very simple. And there's a boss group in there if you want to go fight the boss group. Um, additionally, additionally down here, it is area level 84. So it's not 85. It, it is an 84 area, though. Uh, but good. So there's also the Disused Fane. This also looks like another temple, right? There's multiple, like, temples in these areas. Um, this one you don't need to go in. Okay, this one is, is just, uh, you don't have to do it, okay? Additionally, there's also the sewers. Now, the sewers have four entrances, two in the Curse Bazaar and two in the Upper Cross, okay? So you can go in either one. It's a giant sewers underneath um, kind of that city. You need to go down here because you have to do the quest. Yeah, this is a new patch for these arrows. Uh, you have to do the quest that are down in these areas, okay? So very important to make sure that you uh, that you that you kind of get a sense and of of these maps a little bit and and understand. Sometimes the uh, chest that you need to find is going to be on the outside, or I guess the sewers level two is what you need to find is going to be on the outside. Sometimes it's going to be on the inside. Most of the time it'll be on the outside of the map, so you're going to run the perimeter kind of. But sometimes it is on the inside. Just note that. Uh, regardless, you, you're looking for sewers level 2, and in the sewers level 2, that is actually an area level 85 area, okay? So this is another area level 85 area. If you would like to go farm it, uh, it's very tiny, very, very, very tiny. A lot of people um, aren't going to be going there. So uh, you're, let's say that we've gone, done that, we've gone the sewers. Now you can come out of the sewers. And you're in the upper crust. Or you came out in the crust bazaar, you can run forward to the upper crust. Okay. From there, you have the Forgotten Temple and the Forgotten relic le Reliquary. Uh, am I saying that right? Reliquary? Relic relic whatever. Forgotten Temple is area level 85. Another important thing to note, right? If you're once again, if you're looking for area level 85 areas in this game, Forgotten Temple is one. Um, but other than that, Upper Cross is just another place to run through, so you don't have to stop and do anything there. Also, a note for the Lower Cross, a lot of people like to farm that area for high runes um, up to Burr Rune. They do Lower Cross chest farming, and I have another video on that. If I was smart, I'd probably put like a link right here on my YouTube video, but I'm lazy, so it's, you know, you just search Mr. Lama and see Lower Cross farming and you'll find it. Um, Maybe one day I'll put that link there. But, level 85 area. Uh, so you continue through the upper cross, and you go to the cross causeway, and there's going to be a temple, two temples off to the sides. Okay, right when you enter, there's two temples off to the sides. Another set of level 85 areas, both of these. So the disused reliquary and the ruined fane. Um, both of these are going to be level 85s. Other than that, once again, not important. Okay, you'll just continue through, you'll go to the Travancle, you will kill the Travancle, and if you're on Battle.net, you'll want to kill all the Travancle. If you're on single player, you just need to kill one of them. Um, 
on Battle Night, you do that so your whole party can get the quest and go down and go through TPs and stuff. But on single player, you'd be fine killing one. You'll get the flail. You'll morph all the pieces together in your cube, break the whatever orb thing that is, um, and then you can go into the Giants of Hate, one, two, and three, where you will face Mephisto. So this act has a lot of distractions, right? Um, and a lot of places to get lost. The first half of the act, all the way till you get to the lower Kurost, compelling orb. Thank you. The first half of the act, all the way until you get to the lower Kurost, just annoying, right? Um, just kind of dodgy all over and pits and caverns and lairs and dungeons. It just kind of everything. And you're like, do I go in here? Do I need to go through the Great Marsh? Do I not? Really annoying. Once you get past that, it becomes pretty straightforward as long as you know where you need to go, which once again is pretty much into the sewers and then all the way straight through to the Giants of Hate. Everything else is pretty much just an area um, for farming, right? It's got some, some decent farming areas, decent experience, some boss groups and a lot of these. So just if you want to farm, that's kind of the rest of it. If you're on Battle.net... Um, <laughs> for sure evo if you're on battle.net you don't have to worry at all about um any of these like whatever things right any of anything before the trav the travancle you don't have to worry about because somebody can just go there kill the travancle travancle for you and then they can just get you in to the Durance of Hate from there. So you could basically skip this entire act on Battle.net. Um, on single player, though, you're going to have to run through this whole area. And it can be a little annoying. But that is the Act 3 route. Uh, it's a little complicated and, and a, lot of, a lot of arrows and stuff like that. Moving on to the hardest, most difficult, crazy route ever. Act 4. So, um, this was towards the end of development for Diablo 2 when we talked to, talked to Max Schaefer. He, uh, he gave us the rundown kind of of how like all the acts were coming together at the end and then they kind of got rushed to put in the game out. Whether or not Act 4 was designed in a shortened way or not because of that, I'll let you decide. Um, yeah. So this is Act 4. If you want to talk about straightforward, uh, here you go. <laughs> here you go. You can't get lost. You can maybe get lost in the city of the danged. Um, but other than that, you're starting the Pandemonium Fortress. You're going to the Outer Steps. You look for an exit to take you to the Plains of Despair. You look for an exit to take you to the City of the Danged. From there, there will be somewhere, kind of a hole in the ground with steps that will take you down to the River of Flame. You run to the end of the River of the Flame, or River of Flame. It takes you to the Chaos Sanctuary. And then you pop the seals, kill Diablo. Finally, a route I understand. There you go, Slimo. There you go. Um, yeah. It's super nice. Uh, River of Flame and Chaos Sanctuary are both area level 85, by the way. Nowhere before that in Act 4. So if you're going to farm in Act 4, basically you come out to the River of Flame. Some people like to farm River of Flame. Some people just go straight to the Chaos Sanctuary and farm in there. Also a decent place to farm for um, high runes if you're looking for those. Okay. Uh, is the River of Flame entrance always next to the waypoint? Yes. Yes, they're always together. So, yeah, I, I mean, if I, I don't even think I could clip Act 4 as just its own video of the route of Act 4, because it's, that's it. You can't get lost. You really can't. There's no, oh, puppy. There's not a lot of difficulty there um, with everything. So, very simple. Very simple stuff. So... We will just move on to uh, Act 5, I suppose. <laughs> Angry puppy. You've been lost in Act 4 before? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me open up Act 5. So, the Act 5 route. 
the craziest, I think, when you add in all the things that can happen within Act 5. Bark the Act 4 away, that's right. That's right, bark it away. Um, all right, let me go real fast to uh, this PC. Where's the saved saved games? I thought it was in my documents. Diablo 2 game logs? No. All right, we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a bit. So, first things, you're starting in Haragoth, um, or Haragoth, maybe is the actual name, whatever it is. All that stuff to the bottom left is for the Ubers, okay? So when you have all the keys and you've done all, you know, whatever stuff, you will open up the Matron's Den, the Forgotten Sands, and the Furnace of Pain using the keys, and this is going to be places that you can go. Fresh meat, fresh meat. Twelve months already. Twelve months already. Can't believe it's Can't already, believe it's already, already been a year. Oh thank you for all the content, all the content you've, you've given. given. It's really it's helped. Really oh my god. School. Love school. Thanks, Excalibur. Wow, that is annoying. Thank you for twelve months in a row. I don't know what's happening right now. I don't know why this is doubling up like this. First it was Kylie's and now it's this. Jeez! Check, check. <laughs> okay, Act 5 route. So all of that, you'll open Matron's Den, Forgotten Sands, Furnace of Pain. This will give you organ pieces. You'll cube those together. And that's where I have that little, like, in the cube area. And that'll take you to Chaos Tristram, where you'll fight the Ubers. Okay? So, um... All of that happens in Haragath, but that's not a part of the quest. That's all yellows, right? That's all yellow stuff you can do. The red that you see there is not available immediately. You can't get that until um, you get a little further in the game, okay? So uh, that's not until you save Anya later on. So we're just going to follow the green. And once again, I like Act 5 for its linear stuff, but it does have a lot of offset areas okay it does have a lot of offset areas but they're you know they're pretty good areas so first things first you go to the bloody foothills you're just going to run through that you'll get to the frigid highlands you can just run through that in the frigid highlands is the abaddon um i don't think anybody goes in the abaddon i'm not gonna lie after that you're gonna so it's just like a red portal thing you can just avoid it if you want you go to the area plateau uh, from there is the Pit of Acheron, or whatever. Another area, I don't think people really go. I mean, it's like area level 82. Uh, Abaddon's area level 81. So it's like, you can go farm it if you want. My oh my god. Is there an echo in here? Oh my god, it's so creepy. Why is it doing this? I don't know. Sorry. Um... So yeah, all those things, you can really avoid those portals. You can just keep running straight forward. Act 5 kind of gets back to that straightforward nature. You get to the Crystalline Passage. So at the end of the area plateau is going to be a hole. You'll go in that hole. I'm just going to mute that for now because it's just too much. You'll go in that hole, and this is the Crystalline Passage. Now from here, you're looking for an exit to the Glacial Trail. There is also the Frozen River down here. Um, I guess I should have red arrowed to the Frozen River because there is Anya in the Frozen River and you can save her and this is a quest. So I should have put a red arrow there to the Frozen River. My bad. But uh, not 100% necessary. You don't have to do that to complete the game. It's just if you want to do that quest and then further quest from it, you have to go to the Frozen River and go save Anya. Okay. Otherwise, you can continue forward. You'll go to the Glacial Trail. There's the Drifter Cavern down there. Um, I don't believe that takes you to any quest. I'm trying to remember the Act 5 quest to like think if one of these does exist. Mm, no, I don't think that's a quest. So there's the, the Drifter Cavern, just a place you can kill if you'd like. You don't have to. A lot of people just continue through. And you'll go to the Frozen Tundra. And then once again, when you're running through the Frozen Tundra, it's just another straight shot. There's another portal for you to go down to the Infernal Pit, just in area level 83. 
So still an area that you don't need to farm, right? This is just an area, if you want to farm it, you can. Um, but, you know, it's whatever, right? Uh, so a lot of people continue through there. You go to the Ancient's Way, which is another, like, hole to get you to Ancient's Way. In Ancient's Way is the Icy Cellar, also not needed. So every single one of these areas has, like, a one-off place you can go to. You don't have to go into those. All you're looking for is the Ariat Summit. Now be careful because on the Ariat Summit, you'll generally want to leave a TP right before you go up to the Ariat Summit. Because if you die, that lets you come back and go get your body. You can't open a TP on the Ariat Summit while the Ancients are active, which are the like big boss guys up there, right? So you go up there, there's three boss guys, and you have to kill all three of them to advance without ever taking a TP. So before you go to the, the Ariat Summit, Open a TP in the Ancient's Way right before, go get all your potions, fill up your, your belt, fill up your inventory with potions, come back, open up a TP, and, uh, and go in, right? And, and then you can go and try and fight them. If you die, it's fine, you go up and get your body and you know, try again. But that is the Ariat Summit. Once you complete that, you'll go into the Worldstone Keep, level 1, 2, 3, uh, which will then, it's just straight shots again. Then it'll take you to the Throne of Destruction, which is great. Uh, in the Throne of Destruction, you're going to clear out Bale's Waves. And once you've cleared those, you will finally get a chance to fight Bale and go to the Worldstone Chamber. Now, assuming you have done the, fr the uh, Frozen River and you've saved Anya, when you go back to town, you can go talk to Anya. She will open up a portal to Nilithak's Temple where you can then go down to, into the Halls of Anguish, the Halls of the Pain, and find the Halls of the Vault, where there is a quest to kill Nilithak himself down at the, the bottom of that. So a lot of stuff can happen there from Haragath, um, but Act 5 doesn't require it, right? Act 5 is similar to Act 1 in that you can just get through these areas and you can go straight through. Additionally, I should also mention the Worldstone Keep, 1, 2, 3, Throne Destruction, and the Worldstone Chamber are all area level 85. So once again, if you're looking for any item in the game, or those very high level items, Tyrael's Might, or whatever, you know, you need to be in these er these sorts of areas to find those GG items. So that kind of takes you through Act 5. Um, gets back to that more linear, but you still, I think there's a lot more... Um, little one-off things within Act 5 that could be very easy to be screwed, right? So if you go into the Drifter Cavern thinking that's your way out, or the Infernal Pit, or you go into the Abaddon, or the Pit of Atron, or the Icy Cell, you know, there's a lot of areas that look like you need to go in them, such as all the red portals when you're running through those upper areas, that you just don't have to go in at all, right? So, one other note with the Ariat Summit, where you have to kill the Ancients, is there is a level requirement to do so. So in normal, you have to be level 20. In Nightmare, you have to be level 40. And in Hell, you have to be level 60. If you are not this level or higher, you cannot kill them. Or I should say, you can kill them, but you won't get the quest. So you can't continue forward at all. Okay. Um, so... Just make sure, I mean, you're probably going to have those levels. If you're playing through the game by yourself, you're definitely going to have those levels by that time. The only thing would be if somebody's kind of like rushing you through, and then, you know, there are ways to get around it using like kind of bugging from somebody else, you know, having done the quest, and then you can get through it and whatever. But, um, yeah. Does the game ever actually explain that? It does not. The game never actually explains that you have to have a level requirement to complete it. Uh, it'll just not complete, um, which is interesting. But at the same time, like I said, you're not going to get to that point in this game. The only time you do is if you're a, like a pro speedrunner, pretty much. Um, anybody else is going to be that level naturally, at least, if not you know, decently higher by the time they get to that point. So... But it is something to note. It is a good note to have. So Act 5 is pretty decent there. Um, Nilithak's temple is uh, also where Pindleskin lies. So that's just a note 
um, that he does exist in that area. Um, but, and that's, it's, it's just a quest. Or, that's not a quest, is it? No, but it's a good area. You can go farm him very, very, very quickly, right? Because he's right at the front. So you basically walk in, kill him, farm him. And he can drop every item in the game except for three items, uh, which is Tyrael's Might, Arachnid Mesh, and um, Azurath Blade. So just something good to note. But, and I should maybe say that, if you want to keep that red portal open for Pendleskin, because uh, a lot of people like to farm Pendleskin a lot. If you want to keep that open, either don't kill Nilithak or don't get the, the waypoint. I think it's just don't take the waypoint. Yeah, never mind. You can kill Nilithak. Don't take the waypoint. So in the Halls of Pain, I want to say, there is a waypoint. If you grab it, then you can't... Um, you can't, that, that portal closes. And so every time you want to go kill Pindle, you'll have to go to that waypoint and teleport backwards to go up to it, which is super dangerous because then you're right next to him. You don't want to do that. So uh, a, lot, a lot of people get screwed by that and they don't realize what's happened. They go, where'd my red portal go? Don't take the waypoint that is down there. Okay. So... That is Act 5. That is our run-through of all of the... Uh... Oh, yeah, that's where it is. Thank you. That's our run-through of all of these characters. And let me now go to users. Mr. Lemon C. Saved games. There it is. There it is. We will do a little Diablo 2. So now we're going to switch over to character guides. Okay. Um, you had to reset character because of that? Yeah. It really does suck. Of course. Of course, man. And now we can, I guess, unmute this. But we'll take a quick second here to try and figure out what the heck is causing this double sound browser what if I just delete this yes and now add alert box See how that works. Maybe that did it. Okay, so that's unmuted now. So now we can head over to characters. You have all earned the Laman Cartographer badge. That's right. That is right, you have. Mm -hmm. How slash players works. It auto applies to all monsters spawned after the command's type. Notice he says spawned. Monsters spawned is usually within a couple of screens. So monsters immediately around you might have already been, even if you can't see them exactly, might have already been spawned. So it's a little bit further out. Um, okay, so now let's do, let's do Paladin. Let's do the Paladin. Let me make sure we can see that, perfect. To an ass screens, will ya? Perfect. And stats, skills, 98 skills, ugh. Awful. All right. Blizzard University, I wish, man. Yeah, characters, they're good enough. This'll, this is good enough. So once again, I want you to note that my life and mana totals are wrong from what they would actually be. People brought this up in the other videos. They said, what's, what's going on? Shouldn't you have more life? You should have more life. And we're gonna actually back up real fast. And we're gonna do this. Let me change, do, 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 and Paladin. Mm. All right, so this is why you might say you're wrong, Mr. Lama. So the first thing you should note 
Paladin starting stats, pretty decent. 25 strength, 20 dex, 25 vita, and energy is always like, meh, you know, kind of whatever. But those top three are pretty good um, overall, right? Hit points, 55, stamina, 89, mana, 15. He starts out pretty well. Additionally, let's look at his stats per effect, okay? One vitality is equal to three life. This is, once again, on that mid-higher end, right? They're either two life, three life, or four life for the barb. So three life is very good. Paladin has three life. Uh, he also gets one stamina for one vitality, which is standard except for the assassin, right? And his energy is one and a half mana. So overall, um, pretty solid stats per effect, and you can see that pumping into life is going to be very beneficial for him. Now each character level, he's going to gain two life, one stamina, and one and a half mana. So decent character level gain over there as well. And this is where I mean for each character level. So you say, wait a second, if he's level 99, like that paladin you just had right there, who's level 99, right? Level 99, shouldn't his life be higher than 50? Yes, it naturally would be hi higher than 50. This is a hacked character, okay? So bear, bear with me here on the, uh, uh, bear with me on the hacked character, right? Because this is just for the purpose of showing stats and skills. All of these characters are exactly for that purpose, okay? So we can once again go back and look at the paladin here. Um, that's the starting value, yeah. So if we go faster at recovery, faster cast rate, faster break, faster block recovery. Uh, block rate, sorry. Um, you can see pretty decent, right? Pretty decent. His faster recovery starts at 9 frames. That's pretty good. His faster cast rate starts at 15 frames. Eh, a little slow. It's not bad. It's not great, right? A little bit slow. And then if you go down to the block rate, that's where the pattern really shines. He starts at 5. And with Holy Shield, he starts at 2, block, two frames for his blocking at 0% block rate, okay? Um, so it's pretty nice. You just get a point in Holy Shield or a few points in Holy Shield and uh, he blocks extremely, extremely quickly. So very, very strong character for blocking, right? Running a shield on this character is usually a pretty decent idea. You can generally um, pump up his defense values pretty well and then with that stuff, just make them really difficult to, to hit. Yeah, Holy Shield OP, that's right. So, very solid. So let's take a look at this character. Let's take a look at this character, okay? First things first, strength. Once again, I'm getting enough strength to wear whatever gear that I wanna wear, okay? Um, I'm getting enough strength to wear whatever gear I wanna wear. Energy, probably not putting any energy on this character. I'm trying to think if there's any character that I ever really put in. You could maybe put a few points early on him, on like a Hammerdin. I, did, I would put maybe 10, 15 points on a Hammerdin kind of early. But once you get too far beyond it, it just, you never really need energy on him. Um, defense, I'm gonna say a lot of times you will be running with max block on this guy. Oh, I have no weapons. A lot of times you'll be running with max block. Hi there. Oh. Shields. On this character. Okay. So hooray, whatever, chance to block 1%. A lot of times you're going to run with that very high. So you're going to have 150, 160, whatever it is, dex dexterity. Um, it's almost necessary exactly uh to run max block that that's very right warren it's almost necessary and it's so strong on him and then with holy shield it makes it even easier to get because it increases your um, successful blocking and then you know there's just so many good paladin shields as well uh that you're just generally going to be a max block so a lot of times you're going to have points and dexterity for that and then the rest of everything, right? So let's pretend like this is, you know, max block stuff, whatever. And then the rest of it, you're gonna generally pump into vitality because of course you wanna have life. So 
some things to note. The first thing is I don't have Pluggy on this computer. So I just realized that. So I'm not going to be able to put in all the skill points for, for everything like I kind of in the other videos. But we'll still talk, talk about it. First things to note. This character is amazing. This character can pretty much do everything. He's a team player. And I say this because he has these auras, right? So defensively, he's got great auras such as Salvation, which one point in Salvation is 60 to all resistances. 60 to all resistances. Um, the max block percent is 75%, by the way. So that's amazing. For one point, you and your entire party that's near you gets 60 to all resistances. See you um, in hell. Yo, thank you so much, DJ. Hey, we did get it working. All right. You also can early on just get one point right here for your resistances. If you want to resist cold, fire, or light, you can get defiance to increase you and your party's um, defense. You can help heal your party. You can help reduce the poison on your party. You can make your party run very quickly. You can make it so you can uh, get mana fast for you and your party. And then you can clear monsters in an area with it as well, right? So a lot of very solid skills, and I'll even show you a little bit of Vigor, right? Here's my run speed. Now I get Vigor on, right? Speeds me up. And the more points in Vigor, the faster you go. It's very nice. Um, so very good, right? Mana for your party, heals for your party, defense, resistances, run speed, all that for your party, it's great. But additionally, and you can just swap between these super easily, Additionally, you have offensive things, such as Might, which is going to increase the damage. Um, Blessed Aim, increase the attack rate of your party. Concentrate, which will increase the damage and decrease the chance of interruption. Uh, fanaticism, which increases damage, attack speed, and attack rating. So this is a really powerful run, one, right? A lot of people are using fanaticism for uh, a lot of these builds because it just makes you attack faster and do a lot of damage and better attack rating. Conviction. So if, you, if you're running with a lot of uh, sorceresses and elemental characters, you can lower the resistances of other monsters around you. Can also be used to break resistances. Um, Holy Shock, Holy Freeze, and Holy Fire will not be shared. Additionally, um, Thorns won't be shared, and Sanctuary won't be shared, I believe, right? I don't think I ever used Sanctuary. Or it damages the undead and knocks them back. Yeah, I don't think I ever use that. Um, so these skills right here are the ones that will be just under you. Okay. Thorns is shared. Thorns is shared. So Holy Freeze, though, is not shared. Holy Fire is not shared. Holy Shock is not shared. Maybe it's just those three that aren't shared. Thorns is shared. Is Sanctuary shared? I actually don't know on that one. Like I say, nobody uses Sanctuary that I know. Thorns is shared. So you can give that to, like, Necromancers, Minions, and things like that. Um, which is really nice. But, okay, so that one's not. But these four are not shared. But regardless... A lot of stuff is shared that does a lot of good, right? And is very, very helpful um, for you and your party. Okay. Now, let's get to the combat skills. Because you've seen all these awesome things. Fresh meat. What's up? Thank you, Jake. Our little llama is growing up so fast. That's right. Um, we've seen all the, all the fun things that the character has, right? He can... Increase parties res and, and healing and defense and all that stuff. He can decrease monsters resistances, increase damage, holy freeze, holy shock, uh, all that. What makes him even better, better, better is all of these skills are actually really good. So let's kind of first go back. If I'm starting the game out, let's say I'm on really low level, okay? I'm probably running Holy Fire. I personally love Holy Fire at very low levels. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 15, whatever. Holy Fire is amazing damage. Not so much for the little spark of damage it does around you, 
but the damage it adds to your attack. I can literally just have a few points in Holy Fire, have no weapon, I will cleanse this wilderness. and uh, do 22 to 35 damage. Or if I keep bumping it up, do a lot of damage. So I can sit there and like punch Andariel to death super easily with just points in Holy Fire. I don't even need a weapon. This right here is crazy good, the amount of damage that you're going to be getting from that, okay? That right there is crazy good. Um, so I like to start Holy Fire early. You can use Sacrifice if you'd like. At level 12, I like to get Zeal, but you have to be careful with Zeal because once you get four points in it, such as I just did right there, you're going to get stuck kind of in locks. Right? Where I couldn't run away. That whole time, I could not run away. Because I had to go punch, 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 punch. You're going to have to do that. So you need to be very careful if you're going to become a zealot. That being said, if you get your character a little bit of gear, you get you get uh, zeal plus holy fire, or later on you're going to be running fanaticism. Uh, right? Get up once upon a dime. And zeal. Punch, 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 punch. You know, and you can just wipe out monsters all around you. Um, very, very good. So, first character that you're going to kind of see is a, uh, is a zealot. Okay, first character you might see is a zealot. If you're running into monsters, um, that are immune to physical or something, or you can't deal the damage type you need, vengeance is a great way to get rid of them. So, this is another good thing about the paladin. There's no area where he really can't do anything, right? So you're going and physical immune, great, whatever. Vengeance, boom. I add on cold, I add on fire, I add on lightning damage to my attacks. I'm going to be able to take everything out with this skill, right? Very, very, very helpful to have a point uh, in vengeance right there. Um, there's also conversion. I don't know if anybody really uses conversion that much. It can help you convert monsters to fight against. Uh, so these aren't really skills that are used for, like, all the time, but they can be used for helping you out um, in sticky situations. They're kind of one-point wonders, I would almost say, for each of those. Um, going further away now from this piece of it, we'll move over Holy Bolt. This is another thing that's very helpful if you need to clear out some areas uh, that have magic immune and you're running a Blessed Hammer. Now, Hammer is going to be the most common um, build that you're probably going to see, I would say, on a uh, on this game. Okay, So this is a very good AoE. This does magic damage, or... Um, yeah, magic damage. Right? So, very, very, very solid character. Fresh meat. Yo, what's up? Thank you so much, Hobby. Uh, very, very strong character because you can see the the area. You can track it. Anything that gets touched by that hammer is going to take the hammer damage. And you can get these hammer damage, ha get this hammer damage up to like 17k, 18k, like a ton of damage. So you just sit there and just go bam, 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 with medium faster cast rate, right? We said he doesn't have the best, but it's not bad. Um, you're going to do a ton of damage. And remember, magic immunes are the fewest in the game. Magic immunes are unravelers in wave 2 and whatever, right? And, uh, like, one other monster. I can't even think of it. Like, there's not a lot of magic immunes in this game at all. So you very rarely have to ever worry that you come against a magic immune um, and you're going to be, you know, screwed from it, right? So the, the Unravelers are really just kind of the place that it's going to be um, an issue. Beast in Act 3? Okay, there you go. Beast in Act 3 as well. But yeah, Wave to Hell Bale is pretty much the only place that it really sucks. This is the strongest chaos in character um, probably in the game, I would say. Javazon with Infinity, Light Source with Infinity can also be obviously very good. Um, and you could maybe say they compare... But from just a pretty cheap, easy character to build, you just max out your Blessed Hammer. You're going to run it with Concentration, because um, this will increase the damage of your hammers. And 
and uh, call it good, pretty much, right? <laughs> it's, that's it. Yeah, it's the fastest safety build. There you go. So very, very strong. Um, so you'll have Blessed Hammer the Dents, right? Hammer Dents. Additionally, you're going to have Fist of the Heaven Dents. Now, what does Fist of the Heavens do? This is actually one of my favorites. You're going to run Conviction. Do we not put a point in it? There we go. You're going to run Conviction. And you're going to run Fist of the Heaven. Oh, no. Do I not have enough mana for it? <sighs> Oh, I don't have enough mana. MR Yamalov. That's really sad. I can't reset it to get more mana. <laughs> no. I think we're screwed on that one. Let me see if I can find a wand with some energy or something. The order welcomes you. Come on. Energy. 17 to energy. Perfect. Look at that. Look at that. Genius. All right. So, Fist of the Heaven is like this. Woo! Look at that. Oh, my God. It's so cool. Is that not the coolest skill you've ever seen? Um, PVM? Eh, it's okay. It's not great. Uh, PVP can be pretty fun, right? It can be pretty fun to run that. Because all you do is sit there and just go... Zzz, zzz, zzz and basically bring down light from the sky um, and you can actually make an okay character from this. Uh, so you're gonna have Holy Bolt damage that th you saw it released Holy Bolts around it and then you're going to have the Fist of the Heavens um, damage coming down. So it's a fun character, not the strongest, but it is possible. Additionally, a character that you might see is the Smiter. Now, what's amazing about Smite is that it can't miss. It also has a stun on it. Um, this is the most popular Uber character. Right? Ow. So you can see, right? Hit, 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 hit. This is... The no hit is amazing. And the stun piece of it is amazing as well. This is one of the strongest characters in the game um, because it has that on it. Additionally, it's going to be taking shield's damage. So you can see your shield is going to have a smite damage on it. This isn't a great shield for that, kite shield. Uh, but there are some really good shields for smiters that do really good damage. You combine it with fanaticism. You combine it with uh, life tap, right? And you can go in and kill the ubers and just sit there and go and just punch basically with your shield over and over and over and do tons of damage and your life will be like but you keep regaining it because you have life tap and you're always hitting um so very solid very 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 solid skill you will see this once again like i said as one of the most popular characters in the game charge now this is a great skill sometimes you have charged in so you have people that are run around uh, with an item to charge with and use it for its damage. Fresh Thank you, Ladner. The Paladin convinced my religious parents to buy me M-rated B2 back wow, in the day. Wow, there you go. Convince them to buy it. So charged in. Some people run charged in. Um, like I say, it's probably not the most popular build in the game, but it's still possible. But a lot of people also will just use it for the... Uh, the charge ability. It's a great way to get around. Additionally, you can screw um, screw things up in the game, basically, by charging. You can, like, glitch it a little bit. Um, but whatever. Charge also is viable. And then now we get down to the most OP skill in the game, which you can see is buffing my smite damage, is additionally buffing my defense damage, my blocking percent, Right? All these things are getting buffed from this skill. Mana cost 35. Yes. Oh no, I can't cast it without a... Oh no, that's annoying. Wait, I went outside though. Shouldn't I be able to... Alright, well whatever. Basically, I can cast Holy Shield. And it just makes everything 
with the paladin so much stronger. I think this is one of the things that makes the paladin the strong one of the strongest characters in the game. Which, like I said, he already has auras for everybody. He already has um, all of these different attacks. He's already got hammers, so he can clear super easily. Thank you, NSW. He can clear the game super easily. He has so many options, being a zealot, being a smiter, being a charged in, being a Foden, whatever he wants. And they gave him Holy Shield as well. Which just makes him this tank that can block everything, requires no, uh, like, I, I mean, it just makes it super easy, pretty much. Your block rate, remember if I bring up this image, with Holy Shield, very bottom right, if you just have Holy Shield on, it's two frames per block. That's your faster block rate. Easy max rock, easy max block, easy to max resistances, easy to have high life on him. One of the strongest char characters in the game um, is him. So that kind of takes you through a lot of the stuff of the Paladin. Um, things to note, right? A lot of one point wonders. That's a one point wonder. That's one point wonder. That's a one point wonder. Uh, if you're a hammered in, you're maxing vigor out. Otherwise, these can be okay, uh, but I prefer just having salvation, right? These are just if you want to, like, increase your maximum resistances, because they they do that, actually, as well. It's kind of like a hidden ability uh, of those, they'll increase your maximum. Um, over here, right, in the offensive auras, generally you're running Fanaticism if you're melee, um, you might run like Holy Freeze or something if you if you need that in a specific area. If you really want to be a support for Elementals, you're running Conviction. And then as a Hammer, you're running Concentration. I'd say those are the general things you're running. Could run like Thorns or Might uh, or whatever. I guess you'd run Fanaticism though, probably over Might for uh, like a, a minion, a summon minion army. And then Combat Skills, it's really your pick of the litter. You just kind of, whatever you want there. Um, you know, it's just kind of, they run how, you can run it how you like. But that's kind of a look at the Paladin. Um, very strong character, like I say, very strong, can just do whatever he wants. Max block is going to be pretty important on him, so kind of note that. But note that you're not going to need a ton of dexterity to get max block, because you're going to have things like Holy Shield which is going to contribute a lot to your blocking percent. And you're going to have a good shield and stuff, right? So so that is the Paladin. Now, let's move over to my baby girl, the Sorceress. So the Sorceress is the glass cannon of the game. Um, extremely strong, but extremely fragile. So let's look at our starting stats. 10 vitality, 10 strength. Yikes. Yikes is all I can say. That is uh, not great. Hit points, 40. Ooh, again, that's difficult. That's really, she's, she's really not, uh, she's really not great there, right? But she has good dexterity for some reason. Sure. And great energy. Additionally, if we go down to our stats per effect, two life per vitality. It's the low end, right? That's, that's the low end. One stamina, but then two mana per energy. So investments into mana on the sorceress can actually pay off. Okay? They can actually be worthwhile for her. Um, each character level, she gains one life. So remember, Paladin got two life per level. She gets one life per level. Not a lot again. One stamina, but she does get two mana. So getting mana on her is easy. Getting life on her is very difficult. And that's why she is very fragile, right? That's why she's very fragile. Let's go to her breakpoints. This is for all skills. Oh, well, first we'll go faster recovery. Faster recovery, she starts at 15 and can work her way all the way down. That's not great, right? Paladin started at 9. So, not the best, but you can see it doesn't take a ton to kind of get down to, you know, if you can get 30, you're down to 10. 
uh, 10 frames there, you know. So you can kind of work your way down a little bit, but not the greatest hit recovery, not the worst either, but not the greatest. Um, her faster cast rate is very strong, right? Very, very good. 13 frames at 0%. That's very good, as you would expect from her. Uh, and her block rate is 9 frames at 0%, and it takes a lot to kind of work it down from there. Not the greatest blocking either. Um, so really her strength there is faster cast rate, right? That's kind of her strength. And mana, if we really take a look at this stuff. So you say, okay, why, uh, why do we love the sorceress so much? Well, we love the sorceress, and this is the fastest character in the game for speedrunning. Obviously, the first thing to note is she has teleport. This is, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I give myself some energy on this character. I guess we should go through stats first. First things first, strength, just enough to use equipment. Never anything more. Never anything beyond that. Dexterity? You could run max block. Um, I don't really know a lot of sources that run max block. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Zeal source? Maybe. If you're going to do that. But other than that, pretty much you're either all your points into vitality or... Um, yeah, you would basically need Storm Shield, pretty much, yeah. Like, you're just rare, rarely, rarely, rare instances running uh, running that. But other than that, um, you're either Vitality or your Energy, depending on if you are running Energy Shield or if you are running um, not Energy Shield and running just for Vitality, right? So if you're running Energy Shield, you're going to have maxed Energy Shield and maxed Telekinesis. This is going to make it difficult for monsters to um, kill you, right? They're going to have to work through all your mana first. Additionally, this is going to make it so your faster hit recovery isn't going off because they're hitting your mana down. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, the crappy part is mana burn in this game is pretty bugged in that it's just going to do way too much damage and take way too much of your mana away. And that's going to screw you over. So PVM, um, it's kind of difficult. It is possible though, and I've actually talked with Slimo about this and, and, and whatever, other people, and you can run some energy shield uh, I wouldn't purely be Energy Shield, really PVM, but you can run some Energy Shield and it can be helpful in a lot of situations still. So it, it, the biggest thing, the biggest factor I think is the faster hit recovery, right? Because you're not getting put into faster hit recovery when you're getting hit with Energy Shield, it allows you to get through an area still at least instead of getting stuck and then having to try and re-teleport to get past it. So, right, just... That's, that's something to note with it. Um, it can be good in PvP, though. A lot of people like it in PvP. Uh, yes, that's also true. Bale and the Succubi have a curse called Blood Mana. Um, if your spell... Uh, if you have more mana than life, then whenever you cast a spell, it costs life instead of mana. Uh, this, is a, this is a curse that exist in the game, you've probably never seen it because your mana's probably been never higher than your life. But it's something that you should note. So, anyways, like I say, most people are going to be this vitality. Okay, most people are going to be max vitality. And you can see, even with all those points, I'm not even at a thousand. Obviously, if I had my level 99 points, I'd be at a thousand, but whatever, right? Hard to get life on this character. Um, most people are running vitality, but you can put points in energy. When you're like late game, fully maxed out, whatever, you don't need points in energy. Start of the game, mid game though, um, having points in energy can be very useful. So let's look at a few of the things that make her amazing, right? A few of the things that make her amazing. The first one's teleport. Oh my God, no already way. you can tell why she's broken, right? Already you can tell. Instead of having to wait and run around and oh no, this is a horrible er I just teleport. And I can teleport everywhere, just all around. So that right there is like the skill on the sorceress that makes her, that takes her to like her OP level. Maybe, maybe. 
Because now everybody has Enigma, they can all teleport as well. Skill number two that makes her OP. Static field. So, I want you to look at how much damage I do to this guy. Look at that. Look at that. It's crazy. Okay. Static field weakens enemies by 25% of their current life. Which means I can sit there and just static, 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 static in a group. And I'll even, let's get a few points in this. You can see the radius is getting bigger. You don't need multiple points if you're going to, because you're going to have plus skills and stuff. Start of the game, I like to get multiple points because it's super strong. So let's go find an area. Let's just do cold plains. There's usually groups of monsters here. Perfect. Let's go find a group. Come on. Okay. I can literally just have all these guys. And I have now brought all these guys down in life. Look at the range on that puppy, too. And I can bring them all the way down to half of their life. Okay? This is in hell. This is in hell. I can bring them all the way down to half of their life. In Nightmare, I can bring them down to 33% of their life. And in Normal, I can bring them down to literally 1 HP just using static. So all you have to do, and you saw how few, t how few statics it took to do that. All you have to do is uh, static a couple times. And this works on everybody, including bosses. Okay, including bosses. So I can go up to Bale, and it's only half on Bale. So any bosses, it's 12.5%. It still takes nothing. I go to Bale, and I just go static, 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 right? Six or seven statics, he's at half of his life. In a few seconds, he's at half of his life. I could be level six, and if I could survive long enough standing next to Bale, I could get him to half of his life in no time at all because I'm just staticking. This might be one of the most broken skills in the game. This might be one of the most broken skills in the game and one of the best skills in the game. Once again, it's usually a one point wonder uh, because you have enough skills to just increase the radius on its own, but that's regardless. So this, this, and this are kind of three, the three skills that you will get in your light tree always, no matter what. It doesn't matter what character you're playing, if you're a cold source, fire source, light source, mix, combo, it doesn't matter. You're going to have a point in static, you're going to have a point in teleport, and one telekinesis to get to teleport. Telekinesis is also nice, people don't use it very much, but you can use it to like go places, you can use it to open chests, open rocks, um, you know, pick up potions and gold, whatever, right? I like it a lot. It's great for speedrunning. A lot of people don't use it, though. Okay. Uh, so, one, two, three. That's pretty much all you're going to have. Everything else is irrelevant unless you're going to be a light source or some sort of combo with it, which we'll get to. Fire skills, you're going to, once again, one point wonder, you're going to put it in warmth. Okay. Um, you don't put a point in, in teleport if you use Enigma. That's fair. If you're using Enigma, you don't put a point in teleport. That is the only time. Some people will do that, but that is that is the only time that you won't put that. Um, so, stack does not work with lightning immunes, that's correct. But no bosses are immune, have immunes, like boss bosses, right? Uber bosses, or late game bosses, the uber ones, actually. Uh, so, warmth, you're going to get mana regen. And this is another one point wonder, you'll have like plus 15, plus 20 to your skills. And uh, so at the end of it all, you're going to have um, a lot of mana regen, and it's going to be decent. It's going to help you out. Early on, it's okay. It doesn't do a ton. Um, but late game, this is very, very strong. And it's a synergy to enchant if you want to be an enchantress. So this is the only one point wonder, really, in the fire tree. And cold, frozen armor. This is the best armor, in my opinion, for the Sorceress. When I run a Hell Sorceress, I'm not putting a point in Shiver or in Chilling Armor. Um, the point is, or why I like Frozen Armor, is because it freezes enemies that hit you. So if a melee enemy is around you and hits you, it will freeze that enemy, which means it gives you a chance to get away from that monster. Okay, That is why I love that. 
Shimmer Armor is just going to slow them. Um, or, or it freezes and damages. But same sort of idea. It's not as good as Frozen Armor. And Chilling Armor uh, just discharges an Ice Bolt against ranged attackers. It's, it's garbage. So Frozen is the best. Frozen is the best. Um, use Frozen. Don't use the other two. That's all I can say. Now, let's look. Do Warmth and Regen try and stack? Yes. And you can only use one of these, by the way. So use Frozen. Let's look at... Let's just put a point in everything here so we can kind of... Showcase all. Um... The difference is Shiver Arm will get the effect before you get hit, which is useful. It's not as good. I promise it's not as good. You might think it's as good, uh, but it ain't. It ain't as good. Let's see if I can like show you without dying, I guess. These guys are in the cold. They're not going to be good shows. Let's go to Darkwood. Hey, there we call them in. Whatever. I don't have to prove it. The first one's the best, the other two are bad. Um, yeah. So, continuing forward. Skills and things that we can do with a sorceress. A lot of people like, like cold sorceresses, and I don't blame them. Things like Blizzard or Frozen Orb are fantastic skills. But I would never recommend starting with a Cold Sorceress. Because these skills kind of suck. They're, they're decent when you have crap tons of items. And you're maxed out and running Blizzard plus one of these or whatever it is. But early on... They're just bad. That's all I can say. They're just bad. They just aren't going to help you. Uh, you're not going to do enough damage. You'll start out doing maybe minor damage. Then you'll get to Ice Blast and you'll be trying to get through. And then you'll get to like level 11, 12, 13. And you're like, okay, I can't get to this skill yet. And I just do no damage. And this costs a ton of mana. Uh, fresh and uh, thank you, Snap. Holla, holla, big baller. And it's just bad. Frost Nova. You can't do a lot of damage with it. It's the same idea, okay? These skills are just not going to do enough for you. And you're just going to be stuck waiting to get to level 24, which really is difficult using these skills. Would not recommend starting as the cold source. This is one that you use that respec to get into later. Because when you eventually get there and you get into... A decent respec, and let's go to like stony, right? Everything's called immune everywhere. Um, forget that noise. Bring me to cold plains. There we go. There's some non dudes. I can use skills such as blizzard or frozen orb that I can just put in place and do a lot of damage. Right, and they have really good AoE, they have really good damage, and uh, obviously I have like one point in them, so ignore the damage right now, but these have very, very, very good damage, okay? So, this is very solid. Would highly recommend Blizzard or Frozen Orb. And Blizzard, you're going to pretty much pump all of these in this line, which means you can also use like Ice Blast with it, or Glacial Spike if you want to freeze a lot of things. Um... Frozen Orb is more of that like one point wonder, not one point wonder, but like a, a single skill wonder. It doesn't have a lot of synergies, so it kind of dies off towards the end. But if you go here, you get your Cold Mastery up. You can also pump Ice Bolt for a little more damage. This allows you to spread your skills elsewhere. So Frozen Orb is a fantastic skill if you want to be a multi-faceted sorceress. Okay. Cold Mastery. I'm gonna do how immunities work with Cold Mastery because it's important to note. Cold Mastery cannot break immune. If the guy is cold immune, it doesn't matter how big my Cold Mastery is, how much decrease it is, it cannot do anything. Additionally, all it is is a minus 
to the resistances of the monster that you are fighting. Once again, it can't break their immunity, but if they aren't immune, let's say that there are 50 cold resistances in hell, you could have minus 150% in this, right? It's 5% per level. If you get that to minus 150%, they would be at negative 100. And you can't go below that. So having a certain number of points in cold mastery eventually gets you to a point where it's just not worth it anymore. Because if I had 50 points in cold mastery, let's pretend I had all these plus skills and all these whatever stuff. I mean, it's not really possible. But let's just pretend that I have all these things to, and I get 50 points in it. it. It does nothing for me, right? There is There is just no amount of uh skill point like it's it's too much right nothing nothing has that much resistance if they do they're immune to cold and I, i'm not breaking it down anyways so a lot of monsters i would say are between basically if you can get your cold mastery to be 130 to 140 150 percent you're gonna cover most monsters in the game Sure, some bosses might have a little more than that, whatever. But you are covering most monsters that aren't cold immune in the game with 130 to 150% cold mastery. So think about that when you're putting points in, right? Like right now I have no plus to skills. But if I had plus to skills, plus 15 to skills, plus 10 to skills, whatever, I would have too much at this point, right? Like I don't need to have this much in it if I'm going to have all those plus skills. Additionally, on my uh, Holy Grail source, I run Conviction on her, which is its own minus 87%, I think. So I only put one point in Cold Mastery. I get one point, and then I have plus 12 to skills, I think. So it's a level 13. And then my Conviction, it brings out to a total of about minus 150 to minus to 160% uh, resistances. That all combines, and that, once again, you can only bring a monster to minus 100 resistances, so it just isn't going to do much more beyond that, okay? So think about, think about that when you're maxing Cold Mastery. It's not always going to be 100% um, necessary to have it maxed. But like I said, going back, uh, things that I like about the Cold Source, I like Frozen Armor, I like Frost Nova early on just for 1-point wonder, just to slow things around me, right? Just so if I'm in danger, let's go to the Black Marsh. Give me uh, Frost Nova. If I'm in danger, if there's a lot of monsters coming up on me, oh no! I can slow them. And this makes it a lot easier for me to get away, right? Or to attack them, whatever it is. Always good to have something like that. Great one point wonder for early on in the game. Other than that, Blizzard and Frozen Orb are my late game stuff. Um, moving on, moving on, lightning skills. Now this is one of the most powerful sorceresses, but it does require a lot of plus to skills. The, probably the most expensive sorceress as well. You're going to be max lightning, max lightning mastery, max chain lightning, max charge bolt, Max Nova if you can. Um, you just want to get your lightning damage up to as strong as you possibly can. Now the strengths with this. You can run Conviction. Conviction breaks uh, from, a, from an infinity, right, on your mercenary. Or you can hold, excuse me, hold it if you would like. You can break light immunes easily. Cold immunes are the hardest immunes to break in the game. Light immunes are the easiest immunes to break in the game. Uh, or immunes to break. So... Very, very good, very good for that. So you can kill a lot of monsters with it. The damage is also extremely high. Right now it's like 1 to 174, okay, whatever. But when you pump this, plus this, plus this, plus this, plus this, and then you have plus to lightning skills, plus to lightning percent, plus to um, minus to enemies resistances, all this stuff, you pump all these things, you're going to be doing tens of thousands of damage. 30,000, 40,000 lightning damage. It's a lot. So you can just sit there and shoot this, and it's got good penetration on it as well, right? And uh, so I can just sit there and I can, you know, shoot lightning like that, right? Whee! And I can either shoot it as lightning, or if there's a lot of monsters around, I can shoot it as chain lightning and a little chain between monsters. 
which is really nice as well. Okay, so lightning is uh, very good. Things to note though, remember when I talked about that faster cast rate table? 13 frames at 0% and 12, 11, 10. Lightning is different. Lightning is slower. So um, it's at, what does it start at? 19 frames, I think, is at 0% to cast lightning, I think. 19, 18, 17, 16, 15. I think it's 19 frames to cast it. So it is a lot slower for casting um, it spells. Okay. So that's something that you need to note. Uh, you want to be at 117 faster cast rate. That's like the magic spot um, for a for a light source, right? Is is that 117? That's like the magic number, basically, where it's a pretty quick and does decent damage. But even that is still, I think, 15 frames per shot. So it's going to be slower in how much she shoots it out. But the damage is insane, and when you have all those skills, all that stuff maxed, all that damage, infinity, you can like two or three, four shot bosses, whatever. Probably not two shot, but you're probably like three, four, or five shotting bosses with your lightning. Uh, also, charged bolt can do a crap ton of damage because all the bolts are doing tons of damage, and you can have each one hit if you shoot it really narrow at a big boss. Um, very strong character. Thunderstorm can also be a good side skill to kind of have uh, as well, and that just goes around and, and drops a bolt of lightning, um, you know, if you want it. So, yeah. <sighs> Fresh Thank you, Big J. Damn you, Llama. Every time I kick my D2 habit, here you come again. I apologize. At least I don't have to buy new CD keys anymore. I mean, that's always good, right? That's always good. So... Within this tree, very solid. Another option for the character is a Nova Sorceress. Uh, so basically you teleport around and you cast Nova. And this is actually what is used in world record speedrunning. This is also very good for um, the uh, like PVP. Not so great PVM when you get later on, but basically you just run around and you just Telly, 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 Nova, 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 Telly, Telly, Nova, Nova, right? You're just going very quickly between Nova and Telly. Has great AoE around you, um, and the damage is pretty decent as well. But you can see it doesn't have any synergies. So basically you're pumping Nova, you're pumping Lightning Mastery, and then running Conviction and, and things like that to get your damage up. Um, can be solid, but Lightning, I would say, is generally what you're going to see from a Lightning Sorceress, right? Or a Lightning Spells Sorceress. Last but not least, um, we have fire. And fire is kind of the middle one for being broken in terms of resistances. But there are a lot of fire resistances in hell. So that's where you have to be a little careful. The damage, however, from fire can be fantastic. And this is also a very popular PvP uh, style. And I would say actually all three of them are pretty popular PvP styles because they all have really high damage. So what you're generally going to see, Inferno's trash, uh, Blaze's trash, Firewall is good in niche situations. That's about it. Um, warmth is that one point wonder. Hydra's complete trash. <laughs> Just ignore it. Enchant, you can be an enchant sorceress. So some sorcerers like to do that where they go and they uh, basically become a melee character and get themselves enchant and a super strong weapon and it does a lot of damage and then they can go on a, a killing spree with that. So that's fun, but it does require decent gear. But the most common is this little combo right here. Firebolt, Fireball, and Meteor. Um, Meteor has that delay on hit, so it's kind of annoying, but if you're if you're in the right spots with it or whatever, oh god, right, here's that delay, and then it crashes down, and it has a little bit of burn on it as well. So if you're using Meteor, you're cast, cast, cast. It's great for like cheesing Mephisto and things like that, or slower moving monsters. Meteor can do decently well. Um, Fireball is really good, and this is a great, if you want to be, I recommend a Light Sorceress for early in the game, because you get light, Charge Bolt and Nova and Static are all amazing, um, but a Fire Sorceress can also be very good in the early game, because Fireball does so much damage in a good radius, and you can see it has that one yard radius, which is, you know, a decent, decent little amount around, um, and it's just, it's just got a nice explosion 
about it. Plus the damage is decent, especially when you start pumping up Fire Mastery to increase your fire damage, Meteor, Fire Bolt to increase the fire damage per level. When you start increasing all of those, you're going to see pretty good results from your Fireball. So this is a very strong build as well. I'll see You'll see a lot of people that run fire and uh, are running Fireball, Fireball, whatever, in PvP as well. This is also fantastic if you want to be a mixed sorceress. So the hybrids that you're generally going to see are Cold Light, where you're going to be running Max Frozen Orb, right? 20 points Frozen Orb, a couple points of Cold Mastery, and then you just get the rest from the other things. Uh, and then people run like Lightning or whatever it is, just for some side damage to help out. Or Cold Fire. And when they're running Cold Fire, they're either running, once again, Frozen Orb or Blizzard. You kind of pick which one you want. Uh, if you do Blizzard, you're probably not maxing every synergy with it. So you kind of pick which one you want, and then you come over here and you put some skills into Fireball, Firebolt, and Fire Mastery, or you put skills into Meteor. So they like to run, it's called Meteorb. So they run Meteor and, and Frozen Orb. So you can run Meteor uh, for a lot of damage and then Frozen Orb as well. And you kind of decide what you want is best. For me, my personal favorite is I run Max Blizzard, Max Glacial, Max Ice Blast, Max Ice Bolt. One point Cold Mastery, 10, 10, 1. Now this is on a level 98 character, so that's like I can also go 1, 1, 1. Um, but when you have this as such, this is the most optimal damage for your Fireball. 10, 10, 1 is the most optimal damage for your Fireball, I believe. Um, if you're, you know, only spending that many skill points on it. And you can see it's doing 245 to 302 without any plus skills. Uh, so it's very helpful to to run something of this nature, right? To get some fire damage, and then you're using, like, Blizzard for your main. So you can run that Blizzard stuff, you can run Frozen Orb stuff. Um, once again, kind of exciting. But people run Cold Light or Cold Fire, and like I said, this is due to the fact that there are immunities in this game, and especially with cold immunities, you just can't break them. I mean, there's some you can, but most you're not going to break at all. So it's pretty annoying, and your best bet is to just run some alternate spec with it. So, you know, kind of depends. If you're playing PvP, you're probably just running a single spec. If you're playing PvM, you're probably running a dual spec, at least of some sort, or running with a very strong mercenary, one of the two. You think Meteorb's better? A lot of people like Meteorb. They like Frozen Orb, and they like Meteor. Personally, I much prefer the Fireball, just because Fireball has a lot more... You can be a lot more agile with it. Um, you know, you're not waiting on the delay, the drop, and all that stuff. But that's me. I, you know, I totally understand if you uh, feel differently about it. So, that kind of covers the sorceress, um, and and what sorts of skills and stats and things like that. Very strong character. One strong. She can finish the game naked. She's super strong. Um, but I guess any character technically can, but she can do it a little better. Having teleport just native to her is really nice, so you aren't required to get an enigma for it or anything like that. And super strong for magic finding, very high damage, but she is fragile, so just be aware of that, right? That's the big thing to be aware of. So if anybody has any questions, lightning orb, yeah, a lot of people like lightning orb. No hydra, no, hydra's trash. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to post them there, but I'll go ahead and cut the sorceress right there. All right, any questions on it? Full Light with Infinity is one of the strongest in the game. For sure. What gear would you need to hit that 200 faster cast rate? Generally, it's a light sorceress, and you are running um, griffins. You're running, you know, 40 faster cast rate, uh, wand of some sort. You're running, so like maybe Hodo or whatever, you're, you're running a Spirit Shield, Mage Fist or Trangs, two faster cast rate rings, a 10 or 20 faster cast rate amulet, your armor's going to have faster cast rate on it as well. You know, everything basically has faster cast rate where it can. Uh, will I be covering Druid? Yes, I did cover Druid already. What's a good cl trash clearing farming build? Hammerdin's probably one of the best for that. Why is Hydra trash? It's trash. Um, it just doesn't do good damage at all, and it's 
yeah, it's just kind of meh. There's so many better things. Is Source best character when starting out to MF? I think so. Unless you have an Enigma early, I think Sorceress is best. But, you know, you could say that having a, a Hammered in um, in the Chaos can be decent, which it can. You know, you can do a lot of damage with that. Or um, this will be on YouTube, yeah. Druid can be okay for early clearing as well. Clearing up trash. Yeah, those are both good. Yeah, the Paladin, Hammered in. Um, you rather do Blizzard over Meteor? Yeah, but the point is if you're what you're trying to get for your like other spell, I guess, right? Your fire spell. Do you want Meteor or do you want Fireball, pretty much? Barb is very good MF, but he requires way too much gear. Not good for early. Um, and MF Necro would work pretty well. It's okay. It requires some gear still, though, I think. Still kind of slow. Uh, yeah. Orb is very good for 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 synergy or for for um, hybrid builds because it doesn't have a lot of synergies, but it does decent damage. Not the best damage, but decent damage. Best build to start with for the ladder reset. I always like starting a sorceress personally, because once again, that's going to be your best for early magic find. You can just take your sorceress. You can go kill Pindle. You can go kill Mephisto. You can go kill Indariel. You can go run around and you know. Go to the ancient tunnels if you're a cold sorceress. Go to the pit if you're a what light sorceress or fire sorceress, whatever it is. Um, I don't farm pit much. You know, you can just go to these different areas and just farm them simply and get a lot of uh, easy, you know, easy gear from there to sell, and and then you can start specking up other characters. What should I do with all the cold immunes in hell if my blitz sorceress is useless? Either have a good mercenary. Um, have some sort of alternate spec like fireball, meteor, or something, or skip it. One of them. You can just teleport past him, right? Do you respec into a smiter or max smite 1 to 20? What do you mean? When am I respecking into a smiter? I, I, I mean, if I want to be a smiter for ubers, then I'd respec into a smiter, but that's the only time I really respec into one. Are you going to go over common farming areas and what characters function well there sometime in the future? I kind of did that a little bit in the routing earlier today, but I guess more of that could be done. Um, this was just very simple routing, though, that I want. I didn't want to get too in-depth with it, so I just kind of said what the area level 85s are. Pits for magic damage characters. I guess that's true. It's great for barbarians if you want the physical damage, paladins. Yeah. Uh, Lattery says May 31st. Bnet.com. Did they announce it finally? Did they? That'd be cool. Do you max smite from level one to twenty? No, no. You should definitely have other skill skill points. I mean, like holy fire alone, right, is way better. Smite smite's pretty good at level one for something like that. Um, I might have to redownload your D2 client. Get it, man. Get back into it. Llama playing the new ladder. Yeah, I'll play it. I don't know how much yet. Before I was saying I wanted to play it a lot. Now I'm kind of back on like, I don't know if I want to play it a ton. I might play it some. So I'm still I'm still undecided there. But I will at least play the opening of it. And maybe try and be like first to level 96, 97. After that, it's pretty boring. <laughs> uh, which is better, smite or hammers? Hammers are better in general. Smite's better for bosses. And like ubers. What spells that have that after cast delay and do they all use the same countdown? Um, next delay you're talking about. No, they have different countdowns and you'll have to Google it because there are a decent chunk of them and they all have different amounts, different frames between them and then the next time it can take damage from a next delay spell. So you'll have to look that up. Uh, how do you build your spells for ladder reset for the sorceress? I just go pure cold. Um, or I start out right in lightning and helping out my team with like static and teleport and stuff. And then later on, I'll just spec purely into Blizzard or Frozen Orb. Uh, probably Blizzard, because that'll just be easy for farming, right? Like I said, Mephisto and Dariel, um, Ancient Tunnels, Pindle. I'm just going to run around and drop Blizzards, and, and it's easy farms for easy items. Doesn't matter which character I use for a first timer. Um, no, it really doesn't. Use the one that you want to use. You're going to run into 
each character will run into different challenges. So something like the Barbarian is going to be slower, especially for you. Melee damage. If you're a melee character, you're going to be slower through the game. But that's not always a bad thing. You need to realize <sighs> Fresh that meat. you might have to farm for gear at some places. Thank Frank. Uh, you might have to farm for some gear at places, things like that. But it's not always terrible to just play what really looks fun to you. Um, big things to note, I would just say, is you got to be careful about how you build your character. And you might, you might be fine with that. You might realize that I'm going to play a character through, get to level 23, and all my skills are so screwed up, I need to go respec. And then you can go look up a real guide online, respec into that, and start to build a character that actually works. Um, but, you know, you can get anything kind of through normal. Right, you can you can make a lot of builds kind of work through normal, and then you have to really start to have a real build after that. But do what's fun. Do what's fun. There's definitely easier characters to start with. Elemental Druid for fire, Assassin with fire traps. Um, you know, those two are super easy to kind of start with. But you know, play Summoner, Summon Necro, pretty easy to start with. But play what you want to do. That's right, Mr. Kerr. That's right. So, it's all just fun stuff. Oh, that was a T2 sub. Thank you, Rank. Really appreciate that, man. But I hope you do get into it. I hope you do get into the game. It's uh it's a lot of fun. I'm I miss um, you know, I miss the the times when when I first played Diablo 2. You know, and I didn't know everything about everything. It's kind of like when you learn to solve a Rubik's Cube. It's like cool, but then at the same time you're like, oh, well now I now I kind of get it. And you kind of miss when you would play around with it and be like, I'm just trying things. So, yes, I did show all classes. Um, I have five of the classes already on YouTube, and then I'm going to put these remaining two on there now. When am I going to cover fringe builds like dual <sighs> chain source, wolf bar, bear source? Uh, that'll be later. Yo, Moisturize, thank you so much. Mwah! Appreciate the support. Um, that'll be later on. That's like Pro Thursday stuff, not really Newbie Tuesday. Newbie Tuesday is all about basics. What's routing through the game look like? What's it look like? What does a character look like? How do I want to put stats and skills in? You know, um, all that. 20 points into telekinesis. Oh yeah, if you want to get be an energy shield sorceress, you're pumping that up. So, yeah, that kind of covers that kind of covers all that stuff. Um, yeah, I hope it gets some guys into the game. I hope it gets you guys into the game. It's just great. How do you deal with elemental resistance? Once again, mercenary, avoid them or have some sort of dual spec. One of those three. For sure, snaps. Yeah, and you can always respec and things like that. Well, if you have a respec quest. Sometimes you're just going to blank brick a character into nothing if you ruin your respec and don't have another one. So, you got to be careful. But if you're on Battle.net, you can get what are called tokens, which allow you to respec your character basically infinitely if you keep having more and more tokens. So, that comes when you've gotten through the whole game, though. That's awesome, Moisturize. That's awesome. All right. They should attack. They should. It is, uh, it is 10. I, I don't really... I tried to play StarCraft here. I tried to play StarCraft here, and it just was trash last time. So I'm probably going to head off here. Um, yeah. But I appreciate you guys hanging out and watching. Appreciate you guys hanging out and watching. Let's see if we can go. If there was magic here, it's long gone. I wanna, I wanna go to the shiver armor. Gosh darn it. Play more it lurks below. That was fun. That's mage. Ow. It's so hard to find. Ow. Alright, screw that. This ain't working. I can't really show it. Frozen armor is just better. 
It's just better. Um, yeah, no. It's, it's going to be bedtime. So tomorrow, I think I'm driving all day or all evening. So I think we're going to have to delay World Record Wednesday to Thursday. So on Thursday, I'll wake up. I'll stream Thursday morning. Then we'll have World Record Wednesday. Then we'll have Pro Thursday. And then, like I said, we're going to get back into a more settled routine after this. Okay? Um, I know for the past couple weeks, maybe even a month, I mean, I've been looking for an apartment and, and all sorts of stuff like that. And then I was in Hawaii. And there's just been a lot of stuff going on, right? Life things. Uh, but I want to get back into a nice routine. So... Um, you can just just send it to me on Discord. New. Go on my Discord and, and send it to me. I'll get back into it. So we'll get back into a nice routine. Get some speed running going again. Get it get it all moving. But uh, yeah, I want to just cover this stuff. So, GG guys. Thank you all for hanging out and watching. I do appreciate it. You guys are the best. Um, yeah, keep hands at 10 and 2, that's right. Well, actually, the new thing is keep them at 4 and 9. I think they say it's safer now to keep your hands on the lower than 10 and 2. So the new driving instructions have your hands down lower. Maybe it's 3 and whatever it is, but it's not 10 and 2. It's at least here, if not here. Right. Uh, is what I recommend you is going to be sourced again? Yeah, I, I want to get that record. I'm feeling good on her. I'm feeling good on her. Just got to get it. So, good night, everybody. Love you all. Thanks for hanging out. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace. Let's go to Miss Kylie.